and the committee of the whole meeting to uh, to order. And our first order of business is department head reports. Patty, please. Oh, we have to do roll call. You're right. Roll call. Can we did it three, four times already. <laughs> just take that we Different order here. Yeah. Alex? Here. Yeah. Yes. And Tom? Here. Oh, okay. And Leonard? Here. Manner? Here. Lanham? You look weird on the end. I don't know. All right. We can reports and our city administrator. It's long. I apologize, but I wanted to cover some points. Um, so the good evening, everybody. Um, the EVIP's car charging station ribbon cutting. Uh, we'll be holding a ribbon cutting ceremony for our EV car charging stations here at Sioux Lane Park in the city of Amory. Um, this event will be promoted by the city of Amory, Amory Chevrolet, uh, General Motor Company, GMC, XL Energy, and shared with the community for this exciting new addition to our city. Um, I'm anticipating this to take place over the next month or so. So I haven't gotten a deadline on when we have the, the cabinets and such, but I'd like to coordinate this when we have a firm date on their installation com completion. I'll keep you posted. So then we can set a date when we have our ribbon cutting, and I'd like everybody to come and... Um, employee reviews. I recently conducted the employee reviews for my staff and department heads for the city. Uh, I will be conducting round two of our yearly reviews in August. Um, I've been quite impressed with the staff and department heads work ethic, um, and we should all be happy with the tremendous um, employees we have here at the city. They're good hard workers. I appreciate all of you very much. Um, sewer rate increase. I'm working closely with Ellers. <laughs> to do the business of sewer rate increases. The council will be updated on the process of the sewer rate case study at the June 7th city council meeting. Uh, there was an airport commission meeting today at nine. Uh, we will be starting work on the master layout plan for the airport at the June 15th meeting. The most recent improvements taking place at the airport are crack ceiling of the runway, taxiway and aprons. Um, we're starting to get bids on those now. So that process is starting. Recently had discussions with Hal Davis. He's the airport compliance manager of the Wisconsin Department of Transportation Bureau of Aer Aeronautics. I can't even talk. Um, he advises the airport on compliance issues. Last year, there was a Fly High X event held at the airport throughout the summer and early fall. Mm -hmm. Because of the grant opportunities through the DOT Bureau of Aeronautics and the grant assurances that we signed, uh, for the city of, of Amory, I believe that no non-aeronautical events will be taking place at this time, which would include the Fly High event. So if you hear rumblings that they want to have this event, and this, event, I'm, I'm saying no. Um, it can have bad consequences for us putting in all that new work. So um, capital improvement plan, I am working on an updated capital improvement plan for the city of Amory. Our current capital improvement plan needs an overhaul, like I mentioned. And I would like to see movement on that in the near future. Um, these are several of the uh, there are several of the items from that plan that Ben and I have tackled and completed, uh, reviewing the needs of the city moving forward. Um, this is more or less planning documents for the city financially, and that would help us to see in the coming years what we need. Once it's complete, uh, we will review with all of you. We're starting that process. I've been in talks with Baird and getting our financials together. And I think it's going to be a nice, healthy document. Justifications for what we need and why we need it. And there'll be meetings with all of you, department heads and everybody involved. So um, citywide electronic sign, I'm still working on a, with the sign committee on some sign, a potential sign with some of the community leaders. Um, Chuck's part of that committee. Uh, we ordered the electronic sign and now we're working on the general design. So. It's coming together nicely. Uh, we are hopeful to have it up and running mid to late summer. Uh, it will be located at the fire hall. So it'll be a nice location where people can see it. And the funding is being obtained. And we will figure out donor involvement in a business plan moving forward. So that's exciting. Um, Amory Community Club Past Presidents Banquet. Uh, the Amory Community Club is holding their Past Presidents Banquet this Friday, Friday evening at 6 uh, this will be held at the Brow Restaurant. I have attended in the past, and 
I'm always impressed at the hard work that they put together for this or this event. There's a lot of individuals and organizations that are remembered and appreciated that evening. So it's something to see and be a part of. I really think it's kind of cool. Um, and the City Managers Association Summer Conference, I'll be attending that June 21st through June 23rd. And in Green Bay, home of the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. And John um, Kuhn is going to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. Um, try to I will try to attend the meeting here virtually with all of you, and I'm really looking forward for the training opportunity. So, and upcoming coming events, Memorial Day were closed. Offices here are closed. Uh, council meeting on the June 7th at 5, and June 21st, Committee of the Whole at 5. So, any questions? Um, have you figured out content for the sign? Who manages it? Who's going to put, put stuff on That's here? How can you get stuff on this? This plan. Yep, yep. So, we're going to try to keep it as few as possible because more hands get in there the stickier it gets to become so and we want to recognize all the sponsors um we'll flash them on there we haven't decided if we'll do it once a month or but it's it's going to be really nice really cool sign so yeah Patty, well you talked about the ev station yep uh will the city be billing for that or is that going to be direct built to excel or how do how does um, when you plug in, you, what's the rate? Do you know? Or? I do not know the rate right now, but I'm working with Excel on that as far as our usage, and um, we will get a we'll kind of get a rate schedule. It'll be a, like a credit card machine on Correct. that thing, and you yep. buy so many minutes of time or so. Yep. Mm -hmm. So very minimal cost to the consumer, but um, it will help us with the maintenance of the electricity for that. So the costs. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'd just like to add is Patty talked about uh, reviews. I also did Patty's too. Yeah, so, yep. Uh, the reviews. Yeah. You talked about department head reviews. I yeah. also did Patty's. So. Yeah, Chad did mine. <laughs> so, anything else? Okay. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Patty. Ben, Clerk Treasurer. Hi, Mr. Oh, first off, open book and board review are. Right upon us. Actually, open book is tomorrow uh, from 10 to 12. It'll be well, probably right there. And then uh, board review will be next Thursday, the 25th, and that's also from 10 to 12. So if anybody has to come down for open book, that's the time. Uh, I will also be going to training in Green Bay in June. I will be going to the Clerks, Treasurers, and Finance Officers Institute. Uh, that's offered through the League of Municipalities. I went last year, and it's been the best training I've ever been to. So I really wanted to go again. Uh, the Arts, Parks, and Rec Committee will begin holding meetings at all the different parks in town. We were going to meet on Monday, but we had some stuff come up, so that one got postponed, so we'll be going forward. I think North Park's going to be the first one, and then uh, we'll see where they want to go from there. And then finally, I've had a ton of permit and building calls lately. If Dan was still here, he could tell you. I've had all sorts of people coming in to do everything. So a lot of fences, sheds, siding, roofs, you name it. A lot of stuff's going to be going on this summer, so it'll be another busy year for building projects. Well, that's about all I got. Anybody got? Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Steve, Chief Police. <laughs> Don't make it take too long. That's the stolen. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Uh, well, for the month of April, we had uh, two hundred ninety calls of service. Uh, averaging 13 per day, three misdemeanor arrests, two felony arrests. So you may th think hey, that's not a lot, which is good. So uh, that means crime is down for the most part. Uh, one was an OWI fourth offense. So obviously that person has needs some rehabilitation uh, and a substantial battery, uh, the domestic issue. There were 85 traffic stops. 24 citations issued, 61 warnings. Um, those numbers might be alarming a little bit, but I'm a firm believer that breaks can lead to behavior change if you're if, if they're applied properly. So we want to change people's behaviors so they drive through the city safer. That's the ultimate goal of that. Um, 29 uh, new cases investigated, 11 were sent to the district attorney's office referred for charges. Um, not many uh, drug 
issues uh, for the month of April. Now we have two possession of marijuana and uh, one possession of uh, drug paraphernalia, which was a marijuana pipe for that. 11 juvenile uh, or school responses, which resulted in a multitude of citations for vaping and for truancy. Uh, letters were sent out to the parents as well to try to combat that. Um, obviously, with a lot of the kids that are getting truancy citations and vaping, there's issues going on at home uh, that need to be addressed. We can do so much as a community to do, address that, but sometimes the the, the at home is where it's got to happen. So. Hopefully they're getting the resources they need. For mental health, there are only two transports, uh, which, which was good, and they were both in county for April. Um, five transports for the county jail, so that was for the arrests. Um, accidents, we've had five, so that may seem... I guess uh, kind of, uh, I don't want to say hi, but it's they're still happening. But two of them, one of them was inside of a parking lot. So, and another one was uh, someone hit a parked vehicle. So with the enforcement and the breaks that the officers are out there doing and the traffic enforcement, uh, we're not seeing uh, many accidents. So I think that's good. Uh, summer's coming, so we're going to have more people driving through. Mm -hmm. Policies are back again. I'm still working on those. Hopefully, to be imp start implying, I have an uh, appointment with Deer Creek Technologies next week, uh, so we can hopefully imp start implementing the Chapter One policies all for the week after that. That's in motion. Um, a deer decided to attack our squad car, so that's uh, going to cost us a little. Bit. So that's going to be uh, dropped off on Monday, and. Uh, that's going to be fixed, have a new graphics on one of the old squads. So that's going to match some of the graphics that we have on the new one. So eventually our fleet's going to all look, a, look alike, which I think is important. Uh, zero citizen complaints. Um, uh, yeah, it was yesterday we had firearms training. So I had a phone call from the last time from someone that they weren't notified. So I drove the squad around yesterday and personally delivered all the letters of all the firearm dates to all the surrounding mailboxes to give them a heads up. Uh, so I think that was probably the right thing to do. Uh, I'm sure we didn't get in, in time for a couple of people, so, but I wasn't here to answer the phone for that. Uh, have lunch tomorrow with Northwest Journey. So it's trying to extend more community uh, policing, community service out there. Uh, I also had donuts and coffee with at uh, the retirement, uh, I forgot the name. Is it Manor? What Golden Age? Golden Age Manor. <laughs> that, was, that was very nice. Be able to do that, and then uh, plans to go to the Chiefs of Police Conference in August for more training. And that is it so far. Oh, and I'm working on all getting all the licenses that <laughs> someone over there keeps on giving me. Back like that, but mm -hmm. it's fine. Mm -hmm. so other than that, uh, that's the news of the police department. Any questions? You guys at Hudson? Excuse me. Were you at Hudson? Oh, I I was not personally because uh, about a month and a half I made a plans to go to the school for the middle school for the 4K uh, orientation. So we had some officers representing the department. Yeah, I was ready to go, and I checked my email, and mm -hmm. I thought that was important too. So yeah, it's just another unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It's a tragedy, but it was it was another officer stolen from us. That shouldn't have happened. So, just terrible. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fire Chief Chuck. Good evening. Hello. Hello, Chuck. <laughs> uh, myself and three officers went to uh, electric vehicle training um, a few weeks ago, and we did cover charging stations, or they did. So, um, pretty simple. Starts on fire, 
fire extinguisher only. Shut the switch off. Call the electric company. Probably what he's going to do for those cars. Um, the training was actually pretty good. Um, it was it was pretty much just an eye opener training. Um, they have so many different branches of you know fire extrication that they that's what they're geared towards. This was just an over overview of everything. But they had you know they had electric truck. They had like because uh, uh, Polk Burnett does own uh, a Ford Lightning, which is an electric vehicle. And then there were five Teslas and a, a Volt there. And yeah, it was it was really interesting because it showed us where the cut areas were, you know, the orange. But depending on what model it is, is going to depend on where it is on the car. And we also have to find out what the model is because some of the high voltage comes wrong the bottom of your on the outside of your car and some comes down the center of your center console <clears throat> so it's like there's no federal regulations yet or standardization yet but they're trying to get that through the federal government to get that changed so they are all the same you're dealing with federal government no that's gonna probably gonna take i'll be retired by the time that comes out <laughs> um so, yeah, so it was really good training. I'm glad we went, and then we've come back, and we kind of walking through. Um, when there is a car that's on fire, where the location of the smoke is, if it's in the hood, don't worry about it, because that, what it does, it uh, the car is designed to hold an ambient temperature to the battery of between 100 and 104 degrees. If it's hotter than that outside, you'll run coolant through it to keep the battery cooler. If it's colder than that, it'll run heat through. In wintertime, steam comes out. People call in saying my car's on fire, and it's just steam from it heating the battery. Center of the car, yeah, you got a problem. Tip the car up roughly 45 degrees. Take your thermal imaging camera, find the hot spot, put water on it for 45 minutes or 8,000 gallons. If it doesn't go out, let it go. Because you can, the only thing that cut loop does it takes the power away from the rest of the car. You will never de-energize that battery. That battery will always be mm -hmm. active. Mm -hmm. Even if the battery was totally, and they showed a, a car accident, the battery actually flew off into the guy's yard and it was still energized. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they are dangerous for sure. They are dangerous, but we got a little bit of training under us, but as far as the charging station is going, well, we'll be ready if, mm -hmm. It does. If it does hit the fan, we'll be there. <laughs> um, uh, Monday, actually, too, we had Pope Burnett. This past Monday, we had Pope Burnett down for power lines down, um, which is now we're in the storm season. So, yeah. So that was a pretty decent training. A little bit more than uh, our little tabletops we used to have that Denny Lumen used to put on for us. But uh, it was it was pretty good training, too. Uh, could we fire? came in, a serviced all our fire trucks, or our, our pumps, um, greased them, um, so they're all good to go. Uh, I have been getting a lot of calls about burning permits, um, burning of brush. I mentioned this before, in the city limits, no burning of leaves. Um, no, please don't. Um, if you're wondering if you can get a burning permit or not, there is a uh, an app or a website. It's dnr.wi.gov slash wisburn, W-I-S-B-U-R-N, and it tells you what the current fire situation is in the state of Wisconsin, and it goes by counties. If it's very high like it is right now for us, I'm and you call me, I'm going to tell you, I highly suggest you don't burn at all because it can just spread that quickly and if it's red no absolutely not no permits will be given out if it's red um so go there and look at it it'll save some people a lot of hassle um but that's a pretty decent website that's one i use to find out what our situation is so other than that that's all i got any questions from y'all do, do you have any plans or is there a, a thought to bring some of that you training locally to the to the Fire halls because um, when we were done with the class, you could you had a, a screen up there. You you scanned it. Um, the four of us that went will get a certificate, but it also gives us information on other classes that we can actually take. 
and we would like to bring some of them into our station to give mm -hmm. us more thorough in-depth training from this company yeah it's it, it's dangerous to the firefighters well you, you, yeah well not only that but just think i mean i mean you take a look at california was it 2030 you can't even buy a gas operated car it all has to be electric over there yeah. so i mean there's going to be more and more electric coming out and all the fire departments need to be prepared for it i, I mean it's going to happen there's going to be accidents, fire. It, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it is a scary deal. So, anything else? All right, thanks. Thank, Thank you, you. Mister. Heather, please, the library director. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's been another busy month at the library. Since we last met, we've had 13 educational programs or events and a total attendance of 421 people. And a lot of that was the entire sixth grade class came for a visit. And then the elementary school kids came to visit, but also to learn about the summer reading program. So that's what I really wanted to tell you about tonight. Um, I wanna talk about why summer reading programs are important and why it's great that the library has your support and anybody that can spread the word, encourage people to join, it's really helpful. So it might look like we're doing a lot of fun and games. There's going to be lots of kids running around the library all summer. They're going to be having a great time. But also, they're going to be learning some really important skills. And I wanted to cite just a few pieces of interesting information. I've got the full packet that I gave to all of you, and it's got the sources. But these are some of the big ones. So we probably have all heard that most studies show that if you read over the summer, you don't learn, you don't lose as much learning. And then studies have shown that children who live in poverty, which is a fair amount of our Amory School District population, they're more likely to lose their reading skills over the summer than children who don't live in poverty. So we really need to look out for those kids who maybe don't have the support at home that they need. Um, other researchers have estimated that 50 to 70% of the achievement gap for children living in poverty and children live, uh, of color is a direct result of summer reading loss and summer learning loss. So it has a huge cumulative impact on youth. And then the next thing is children don't catch up to their peers in the fall. They found that by the end of sixth grade, if children have lost reading skills over the summer, they are two years behind their mm -hmm. classmates. That's a big deal. And these children now are the people that are gonna become adults, hopefully people having families or opening businesses, supporting our community, bringing in tax dollars. So it's so important that we have great summer reading programs to keep kids engaged, to keep them learning, and to just let them know, you know, you don't have school to go to, but you can come to the library. It's a safe place, it's a welcoming place. So we're trying really hard to bridge this gap between when the kiddos get out of school and then when they start with school. Uh, we have some age-specific targets for the summer reading program. So the little guys, we work to help them prepare by developing their early literacy skills. If they don't develop those early skills, they're going to be behind. They're not going to like reading because it's hard, and then they just fall further and further behind. For the slightly older children, the activities in the programs for summer reading are designed to build on their learning skills, their reading skills, their language skills. So they've got some, but we're just encouraging them to build and get better and better. Um, for teens, we're focusing on motivating them to read, which some teens love it. Some teens, you have to really hold their hand and help them figure out what do they want to read and what do they want to be involved in. And then also to get them to discuss literature, because believe it or not, it's kind of fun to talk about books. If you like books, if you find people to talk to, you share ideas and experiences. And then for adults, we're focusing on encouraging them to read for just the joy and the enrichment that it can bring to your life. I've shared several packets with you. There's a reading log for adults. There's a reading log for kids. So that gives you an idea of what's going on at the library. I believe Brooke included a calendar of events with her kids packet. So we've got stuff going on all the time during June and July. And then you can also join and track your reading and activities on an app called Beanstack that we are a part of. You can go to our website once we turn that part live and you can do your reading and logging that way. So just here to really push anybody, if you ever have a chance, encourage a kid to join the summer reading program. 
encourage a kid to come to the library during the summer. There's going to be a lot of really fun stuff going on. And um, I think it's one of the public library's missions. And one of my personal life missions is to try to make sure that kids don't get behind. So that's why I'm really excited about summer reading. I think it's our biggest chance to have a huge impact on the children in our community. Any questions about summer reading or anything else that we're doing? No? Okay. That's all I, got. I, I thought for a minute there you were going to advocate for your own school. <laughs> but, um, I'd be on board, I think. Teacher uh, colleagues would not be happy that I would uh, agree with you, yes, but I yeah. agree with you. I understand. <laughs> Anything uh, else? No? no? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Director of Public Works, Jeff. I'm, I, it's nice to say it. I won't say it anymore. I just can't. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Hey. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's been busy again this month. The dam is completely repaired. We replaced the cables, the winch, the chains. Well, everything should be good now. And it's back to the operating level. Been getting a lot of calls and complaints, but it is where it's supposed to be. Um, we've had to spend a lot of time in the parks. This the docks are getting in bad shape. We've replaced or repaired three of them. They're in and they'll make it through this year, but next year we got to do some looking. The band shell, we've got the wall all stained up. So that's looking good. And we're going to put that up tomorrow. <laughs> um, and a lot of thanks to our new electrician guy. He's been helpful too. Can't think of Jetta. And we had three sewer laterals fail this month. We don't actually do the work, but we got to be there to make sure they compact the soil, hook everything up right. So that takes a lot of our time up too. Uh, we had a water main break. We got a hydrant ran over by a semi this winter. We got that repaired. Uh, been working at the airport trying to get their bathroom cleaned up. They had a lot of roof leaking last year, so a bunch of mud being put on that and cleaned up. Other than that, we don't have any summer help to speak right now so the guys we've been out mowing and cleaning bathrooms and doing all that and sweeping streets patching and day-to-day -day stuff any questions um when do you do prep for the new bathroom so when is that going to happen bathrooms will be digging monday so prep, very much prep we got that going we got a guy coming in to do the concrete right after we get it leveled off mm -hmm. and then we'll dig the water and sewer into them and Plumber will come in and hopefully by June fifteenth, if everything goes good. Yep. That's good. for both. That's for both. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sorry. I would the one over here at Sioux Line Park. The options are to have it six feet from the curb, or we have to maybe move it. I know that's awfully close to the curb. On the street, but with power going through the middle of the park, mm -hmm. everything laid out the way it is. That's about what we're going to have. Six feet from the curb, or what? Or we move it to a different location in the park than we had planned, and then we just kind of have to redo. You know, I know we're talking about redoing Sioux Line Park a little bit, but if anybody's got any input or anything, now's the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If the red blue and that one that's going in there, does that have the option to do any heat with that, or is that no. just a shell? Because there, there's no showers in those. Yeah. Yes. Just off the top of my head, thinking about the no about up till uh, Thanksgiving when we have the big, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, we could make a product. We could bury it low and see what happens. Maybe it isn't that important, but it, you know, there's a right awful, there. there's an awful lot of people that go back and forth across the mm -hmm. street there to look for a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Let's pine trees next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess, like you say, if anybody's got any opinions or options, take a look at it and let me know if you what you guys think. Do you have a proposed layout someplace that we can take a look at besides up yeah. here? <laughs> that'd be helpful. Six feet, six feet from the curb seems awfully close. Right. 
Well, do we do what usually happens and we just wait until we do it and then complain? Yes. What is the side tree? And is it, it would be that. I don't, I don't even know the orientation of the building. Is it going to be I say this easy. north, south, or is it going to be east, yeah, west? It would be east, west. You'd have the 12 feet going north and south, and the long part would be east and west. And it would so be pretty much right where the bushes are. You got the electric charging stations here, and we put the bathroom. And so would it be, it would be the doors facing center doors street? Would, I thought we'd put towards the park. It would be just <laughs> one maintenance store that would be near the. Oh, so, so more or less, it's a blank wall. Right. Okay. That's, That's not, not so bad. Deal. That's not so bad. You guys, for that, it's your bad deal. Signs on that. That would be the easiest and cheapest way to put it in. Yeah. And it's just parking areas anyway. Does that have the fall, does that have the full brick on it on the outside? Just like the one in North Park. Yeah. I think it's like half brick and then it's got fake wood on it. Yeah. All yeah. It. yeah. The campground's been busy. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I think there's six of them up there right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Moving along. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Thank, Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Hey, I'm Taylor. Way back there. All right. A couple of Fridays ago, Ben and I attended training in Rice Lake that was like clerks and treasurers kind of combined for a conference. We talked about a variety of topics, including board of review, which will be handy coming up. And then they also had MSA there, and we were actually part of their slideshow with our Keller Avenue project with all of the stuff that we did and the work with them for that. Um if you have not paid your bill yet, please do so. Utility bills were due on Monday. Um, I'm sure there's still quite a few out there that haven't been paid yet. So if you haven't done that, please do so. If you can't pay it in full, please come into City Hall and set up a payment plan. We are more than to work with people if you can't pay your bill right now. We'd rather work with you than have to disconnect you. And then liquor license, the actual applications, we ask for those to be back by Monday. So we have gotten those back from everybody and can work on going through those and looking to make sure everything's filled out correctly. We still have operators licenses that are flowing in. We've probably had about half of them go up half or maybe even a little more go up to the police department so far. So there's still more to come for him to sign off on. And there's been a lot of talk lately about people's dogs. So if you have a dog in the city of Amy, please be sure that you have it licensed with us. Um, it is, it'll be $10 now since it's after the end of um, March, if it's spayed or neutered, otherwise it'll be 15. But it is important to have those dogs tagged so that if the police department does find them, they can return them to the rightful owner. There's been a lot of them that have been ending up in the Humane Society I've seen. So, And if you do have a pet dog, make sure you're looking at our ordinances so you know how to properly keep that dog in the city. So any questions? Question. Yeah. Dogs have to be on a leash, correct? Yes. Dogs are supposed to be leashed. We have a leash law here. So we do not license cats. So they're not supposed to, I'm sure, let them roam, but we do not license them. So thank you. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, Billy. For the uh, leashes, is that on your property as well? I have not read the ordinance in depth to know for certain, but that is something that I'm sure we could look into. It should be listed in the ordinance. Okay, I'll check. Thank you. Okay, number two, resolution, resolution 05 2023, resolution accepting 10 tools of civility. This is in our email. We want to have a good run meeting with no problems. Um, we haven't had too many. I know I can look back to maybe meetings back before we moved into this building and some of those were contentious. <laughs> um, this kind of follows the template of Duluth, Superior. It's getting to be more common 
for us as council and people that are attending the meetings to just realize how meetings should be run. So this is just keeping everybody civil. Yep. I think there, there was a, what in the municipality magazine that was covered a number of times. Uh, mm -hmm. The gal actually wrote them. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think we should follow suit. I think um, we're getting big enough Mm -hmm. And there's enough issues that go on in the city that it just reminds everybody. And what I'd like to see is if this is approved, we hang it up. So we have people that come into the city and they attend these meetings, they sit in the meetings, they can kind of see what we expect. Um, yeah. You'd like to say that these things are common sense, but sometimes these things need to be stated out loud more or less mm -hmm. and, exactly. and make sure that it's out there in front of people. So I just think... You know, others are doing it, and I, I would like to see us do it. So that's kind of why I propose it. So there's a policy, and there is a resolution. They kind of tie in together, so it gives everybody the, and I think we we put them up there on full display. We've got two billboard, billboard, uh, billboards here, and we can put those up with other notices, too. I think Ben and I are going to start making sure that everything is more apparent here in, this, in the council chamber so mm -hmm. you can see this one. So that's that. And that's that. So. Do we need a motion? We mm -hmm. do. I would make the motion to approve that. The resolution. Yes, zero uh, five dash two zero two three. I'll second. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve resolution zero five twenty twenty three and send it to I second. council. Um. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, is the City of England meeting policy is just a statement, statement. that yep. that gets it out in, in public? Yep. It is a policy. So is it going to have like an, is it just a policy that we're approving? Is it going to be, where is it? Where will it reside? Uh, we will put it on our website and we'll put that on there along with the resolution and we will keep it here at in city city council chambers so that the public can see it too. And if anybody wants a copy, we can mm -hmm. combine them. Is the meeting policy replacing something we currently have or is this just all new going with the civility? Mm -hmm. Okay. The one thing that I'd like to see modified maybe a little bit is about the comments will be limited to a one five minute comment at the beginning. Um, that to me isn't very clear. Is it only a five minute public comment period or is it five minutes per? And it seems to make sense to me that depending upon whatever topic is that potentially is being discussed, that the chair of whoever is uh, meeting sets what the time limit is based upon uh, yeah, numbers. numbers. Sometimes, yeah. yep. Um, I think the other thing that would be nice if somebody is going to have something in public comment, that they have to write it down as they come into the meeting so that can be brought to the chair so they know what's coming up for public comment. Mm -hmm. And I also think too, and this is pretty common too in meeting places, um, you should be part of the city if you're having a comment. Or, or at least related to things that are part of the city, right? So if you have somebody from the uh, women's club that doesn't live in the city, we don't want to preclude them from talking about that either. So city related topics, or you are a resident of the city. We don't want somebody coming in here from wherever mm -hmm. we're at. There are a number of issues all the people right on uh, the outside of the city, i.e. The, the airport, uh, when we expanded the airport a few years ago, um, that brought in all kinds of folks from Blackbrook and uh, so on. So, I suppose depending on the topic. You know, it, it is. Um, that's the way to get to be a real unpopular administrator if you, you know, Shut people off like that, but mm -hmm. but there are times it's certainly necessary. Yep. I think with some of those modifications, I would make a motion to approve it or uh, forward it to or to the city council. City council. Mm -hmm. 
Is there a second? Um, has changed or? What do you need? I'm not. I'm not seconding it because I have a, a question. Okay. I'll withdraw my motion. What? Okay. Um, I just question um, if when this goes into place, um, we already have um, on our agendas that uh, public comment is limited to 10 minutes total for speakers present at the meeting. But if we're going to be limiting mm -hmm. comments to five minutes, it's only allowing two people to talk. And I don't necessarily think that that's enough time. So we so, should amend the agendas moving forward. Too. Yeah, I feel like if if we're going to put this into place, um, for some reason, I thought it said three minutes at some point in time. Yeah. Um, but should, yeah. comments were limited to three minutes, they should, which they should you know, be in sync. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a match. And I, yeah, I think that either this needs to be amended or this needs to be, but either this needs mm -hmm. to be changed because yeah, only allowing two people to talk in a public forum and is well i mean mm -hmm. it's not but <laughs> exactly. it, it isn't always so okay so i will second this as written with i think what you were going to change a couple of the words keeping in the five minute comments but then i think this. And we'll have time oh, to wait, 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 wait a minute. So I have made a motion. A motion. Now, you're, now you're making the motion. So you're making a motion that we keep it at a five minute limit in total? No. Okay. That's right. Per session. No, okay. Per person. Change the. All right. Then I'll second that motion. So far, we didn't use the send your motion. Yeah, so far, we didn't discussion. Okay. Motion is made to with adjustments to, um, as noted, to approve um, the city of Illinois meeting policy. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, whatever's written down, somebody's going to have something to say about it. Okay, Keller Avenue parking discussion. All right. Um, just in front of uh, Stems from the Heart, I think is what it's called, on Main Street. Mm -hmm. They're parking there. I've talked to Ed White, and what we're going to do, because he's already was pretty sure that you couldn't park anywhere. We're just going to paint it yellow and put up a no parking sign just to delineate it, let everybody know. I've talked to Ed and he's okay with it. Yeah, they have parking off, mm -hmm. off the street too. So yeah. it is an awkward spot. Yeah. And you block the bike lane. Right. So it's yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's right at the stoplight, more or less. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good call. Yeah. Comments? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I fought that battle. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't have the building anymore, so that's right. So it just has residual. <laughs> that one. Okay, we'll get you for that. <laughs> okay thanks 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 for thanks for recognizing that and, and taking action that's that's important all right legal services for the city where are we it's on here we have Bucky norman um and do we want to continue with Bucky norman we we need a contract of some sort something that we have in to keep and it's going. It's old. Yeah. Yeah. Is it something that we just can we refresh it and, and see what's what I'd like to see that, and, you know, and take a look at it and, and you know discuss it after you get that information to us? You know, casual is okay until it's not. Yeah, no, there should be a fee agreement. And yep. it, it's probably outdated. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's been one 
since I've been this is sort of been rolled over. Yep. We will get you an updated one. If um, I guess I'll ask the question then too, since I have been needing to contact you guys and for a couple different issues. Um, is there currently one, I mean, are you our main per point person, Paul? And what is the best mode of communication with you? Is it email? Is it telephone? How are you wanting to be communicated with? If it's Lindsay, we should be contacting. I mean, are, I guess the, there's oftentimes questions as to who we should be contacting and how do we communicate with you? Okay. Certain things that Lindsay has taken the point on, mm -hmm. those things we call her directly. Okay. So we're in contact all the time. Right. So um, you don't have to hear about that so much for you. I'll call her. We'll give me your opinion on that. We'll go back and forth. Mm -hmm. She's a spot on the mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. I'll bring that to the meeting then, and then we can approve or whatever. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes we don't always think of that first. You know, there's sometimes that we should probably ask the question first instead of struggle with it for a while and then deliver a really complicated problem, which we're probably good at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that for that one. Okay, um, thank you for being here. Um, public comment or updates, community updates, anything anybody needs or wants to tell us about? Apparently not. <laughs> okay, brings us to our closed session item under Wisconsin Statute 19.85, sub 1, sub C, Police Department considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. Need a motion to go into closed session. I'll make that motion. Session. I'll second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Oh, nope. Nope. Roll call. Excuse me. I got it. Say I'm up again. <laughs> Marks. Yes. Lambrecha. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Okay. Yes. Leonard. Yes. Manner. Yes. Lanner. Yes. We are in closed session.